Hey, what's up guys? Eververa94 back with another action figure review. Today we are looking at the Hasbro Star Wars The Black Series Turn of the Jedi Heroes of Endor box set. And this is what would have been the San Diego Comic Con exclusive, or what pretty much is the San Diego Comic Con exclusive, if, of course, it wasn't canceled due to the most recent pandemic around the world right now. Now, I've had this set for over a week now, and I haven't been able to put up a review until now, so I'm finally happy to get you guys a good look at this set. It's, of course, Return of the Jedi. This is based off of the indoor scene of the movie. So this box may not seem as big, but as you can see, I'm out of frame or I'm out of my reviewing area for this video because of this, the size of this box. So here is the side of the box. Nothing too crazy going on on the outside. On the back side, nothing too crazy either. We just get Star Wars The Black Series. If you guys want high res still images of this set i did put it up on my instagram account so be sure to check that out uh, and then here's the other side we can kind of see the death star here and some tree branches over here now this is a sleeve on the top you can see the inside and on the bottom there is nothing but a barcode right there so let's put the box down and remove the sleeve so it's a nice presentation. I like when box sets are like this, it's very nice. There we can see Paplu speeder bike on the front. Very nice. And then on the side, we can see Han Solo and Princess Leia Organa on this side. And you can see the little backdrop image of uh, the scene is there, which is cool. And then on the other side, we get to see Luke Skywalker. And then we get some trees here. Unfortunately, it's just cardboard. It's not an actual tree accessory. That would have been pretty cool. But I'm sure, which we'll take a look at, I'm sure you can probably slide that scenery out and possibly use it for a display case. Hopefully. We'll see. But this box is actually kind of funny. Designed kind of funny, I should say. Because if I flip it like this, this opens up. And pretty um, unique design they went here for this box. We'll fold it back up for right now and turn it over to the back side because there is a little read up that I do want to show right here. We have Star Wars The Black Series in green, which is very nice and reminiscent to uh, Return of the Jedi. Those of you who want to read the read up, you can go ahead and pause the video now. And then I'm going to go ahead and open it just so you guys can see the images on the inside of the flaps here. We have the Death Star and we've got kind of a green light aura around it. The same images on the other side. And that's about it. So now I'm going to go through the painful process of opening this beautiful set. Uh, mint on card collectors, I apologize, but it has to be done. I want to give you guys a good look at these figures. I do want to show you guys that the whole flap comes off just like this, slides right out. And this is how this looks. So we get a total of four action figures and one speeder bike vehicle. The price of this set is $109.99. And if you do the math, it comes out to about $21.99 for each piece, counting the speeder. So about retail price of what every uh, figure would cost. I'm sure if they would release the speeder alone, only a speeder, it would probably be $20 as well. So that makes sense. $21.99. Uh, for each piece here and I'm pretty sure if the trend continues that uh, Hasbro always releases their exclusive sets as individual releases so I'm sure we're gonna get Endor Leia, Endor Han Solo and Luke and even Paplu as a single release eventually it's always been a thing they've never uh, strayed away from that trend each figure as you see them right now is how they came packed in this box and let me tell you this took me a decent amount of time to get out of the box these things are strapped in very well because they're meant to be displayed in those poses that they are in inside the box so we have Paplu inside uh, as he is riding the speeder bike and his hands are rubber band and strapped onto those handlebars his feet are strapped on everything so he doesn't fall off same goes for Han, Leia, and Luke. They're all in different poses inside the box, so they're all strapped in very tight with a bunch of rubber bands and uh, plastic straps. So it's very time-consuming and a little bit frustrating to get out the box. Uh, so the, the openers out there might have uh, not 
much of a fun time opening up this box. But I'm pretty sure that the majority of the buyers that get this set are going to be mint on card collectors. This is a beautiful set to keep in the box. I still have my Luke on Speeder exclusive set still in the box. I think it looks fantastic in there. Now each of these figures come with their own accessories. I'll put them real quickly right next to them. Uh, we have a helmet and a handgun for Princess Leia. We have the handgun for Han Solo, and I know they have names, but I do not know them, so uh, bear with me there. And we also get the trench coat for Han Solo as well. We'll put that one to the side there so it doesn't get in the way. We get a staff for the Ewok, and we get the lightsaber for Luke. Keep in mind, Luke is wearing his helmet, which is removable, and I believe that these ponchos are also removable as well. So here's a closer look at Leia. We'll start from left to right with ladies first. And we have her uh, with some soft goods or the robe or the poncho, however you want to call this thing. And I do believe this is a new release. I don't think that uh, this has been a single release yet. I think all these figures are new releases right now. So right now it's the only way to get this thing is uh, in this set. And as you can see, the poncho is removable. So the belt comes apart right here, very well hidden behind that little pouch. We'll slide it through the hole, and now we can remove the poncho now. So here's a look at Leia without the poncho, and it's almost like an entirely different figure. You see all the hidden paint and how well it's done too. I think they did a great job with it overall. We have a, uh, the belt as a separate piece. It hangs in there pretty loose though. As you see, I think it's meant to give it some room for the poncho to be tucked in there. So that makes sense. And we have the holster there for her blaster pistol. So here it is. It's black, but with a silver tip there. But at least there's some paint to it. And it's not just all black, so I'll take it. And this can be slid into her holster. So we can have it holstered if you don't want her to use it. And then also we do have the helmet here. Which looks pretty good strap comes apart at the peg there we can slide it onto her head just like this and let's see if i can get it to pin in there so that was a bit of a pain to get the strap to actually peg into the peg hole inside there but i actually got it in there so uh happy about that uh, overall the detail on this home it looks very nice i love black series for this they always have done this ever since the beginning ever since series one and two uh, way back with the orange and black boxes. Uh, they always have this wear and tear painted onto their metal parts of figures like Boba Fett had this too. And it's just overall the detail and the paint is always on point when it comes to Black Series. So I've always appreciated and respected them for this. You can definitely tell the different department of Hasbro that works on these. It's not the same ones that do G.I. Joe's or Marvel Legends. They're definitely a different team for sure. Uh, but we'll take one more close look at Leia and then we'll move on to Han Solo. So from here I'm going to back weight just a little bit and quickly run through the articulation of Princess Leia. Her head seems to be on a ball jointed peg. Uh, doesn't seem to be on a hinge so the, the head does not move up too much. I feel like I'm going to snap it but she still looks up enough. Looking down looks down just fine we have the neck as a separate piece so that helps with some of the movement of the head the head also rotates or swivels left and right uh, we have the arms that can go forward all the way up and then they can go back down in and out about this far there is no bicep swivel we only get a 90 degree bend on that single jointed elbow we get a swivel at the elbow and a swivel at the wrist there there is a side hinge on the right wrist and there is a regular hinge on the left hand right here and i do appreciate that they painted the wrist watch as well so that's cool and then we have a swivel at the waist it goes back like a diaphragm joint but it's all in the waist so you can see there is a ball joint at the waist there crunches forward slightly tilts left and right slightly and of course as i mentioned the swivel the legs are going to kick forward about that far it goes back down uh, in and now she can do a full split we have a thigh swivel a single jointed knee that bends a little bit more than the 90 degree uh, we have a swivel at that knee and then we have a hinge at the ankle along with a rocker and she can also hold her blaster pistol perfectly fine in her right hand and here's a quick look at her next two 
our Princess Leia. This was from the retro to, uh, 40th anniversary of A New Hope. So there is that, and then I also do have the Hoth version of Leia. So there's a quick side by side. Next up, we have Han Solo. And this definitely is a new Han Solo because I own the very first Han Solo that came out and it looks nothing like this. You can see that they're using the digital printing tech for the face and it does look like Harrison Ford. I'm not going to say it's 100% there. It kind of looks a little bit weird at some angles. I don't know if I'm thrown off by it, but I can definitely see Harrison Ford and the likeness is pretty crazy. So I appreciate this a lot more than the previous uh, face uh, sculpts that they made for Han Solo. So it's a closer look at Han Solo's outfit and belt going down to the legs. You can see the paint job, glossy boots, good paint on the side of the pants, going down to the back or going up to the back I should say, good sculpt. Overall looks good for Han Solo. So what more can you ask for here? And the only accessory that he comes with is his blaster pistol which and I looked it up and it's called a DL44 is that correct let me know uh, but that is the name of this particular blaster pistol that Solo uses and he can definitely hold it in his uh, in his hand just fine that goes to the right hand right here this thing was strapped in, in the box with like two rubber bands pretty crazy how much effort they went into strapping down these figures inside the box uh, but overall this looks good as you see and then we have the holster down here so this is gonna unpeg right here so we can get the pistol holstered in if you don't want him to hold it so just like that we can get him to hold his pistol on his side and there is one last thing we can do to Han Solo and that is putting on the trench coat that comes packed in here so all you gotta do probably move his arms to the back like this and then just slide one arm and slide the other arm and voila now we got him with the trench coat on this is a soft goods trench coat of course there is no bendy wire system or anything like that and i know the collar is popped right now i think we should probably get this to go down uh, but overall the look with the trench coat is pretty cool at least it, uh, it, it offers a different look for one figure and this is the indoor look, of course. So if we want to complete the scene, uh, we should have him in his indoor trench coat. This is definitely no Mesco quality, but it's still a decent little trench coat soft goods um, accessory to put on Han Solo, which I do appreciate. And I think it looks pretty good. So Han Solo's head swivels left and right. He can look up and down. Not a crazy amount. Again, he's not using a ball jointed hinge for the head. He's just using a ball jointed peg. So this seems to be something that Hasbro's been doing lately, especially with G.I. Joe's. So they're moving it into uh, Hasbro Black Series as well. And I don't know how I feel about it. He can still look up though, so that's good enough for me. And he can still look down. It's just not as deep as you can get with a hinge. Uh, we can get a little head tilt there. And then we have the arms going forward, about this far up and back down. They go in and out. So they go out about that far and back down. We don't get a swivel at the bicep. We don't get double jointed elbows. I know that's a thing for Black Series, even with the male. Uh, both male and female figures get single jointed elbows for the most part. But that single joint does bend further than a 90 degree bend, almost like a double jointed elbow. So I'll take that. We get a swivel at the elbow, swivel at the wrist here with a side hinge for the right hand. And we get a regular hinge for the left hand there. That seems to be a trend. Of course, when he holds a weapon, uh, it's better to have that side hinge. We get a lower diaphragm joint at the torso so he can go forward and back. Back more so than forward. We swivel there and we get a little tilt. Uh, we also get the legs kicking forward even with this gun holster on his side there He can still kick forward. So that's good. And then the uh, The leg on the left Side will kick furthermore because obviously it's not being hindered by any straps there We got a thigh swivel. This one's a little bit tighter because of course this is actually molded onto the side of his leg It's not a separate piece uh, and this one, of course, will swivel a lot easier. We get double jointed knees, and then we get a hinge at the angle with a rocker as well. So I do have the original 
um, Han Solo figure and it's pretty crazy how different these things look now. Just a matter of how many years has it been? Close to 10 years. We haven't made 10 years yet. I believe this line came out in 2013, 2014. But it's still been, you know, several years since and we have such an improvement since then. Next up, this is a fun one. We have Ewok, and I think this is the first Ewok we've gotten. I don't know, I'm not really up to date with Black Series that much as much as Marvel Legends, but correct me if I'm wrong, this is the first Ewok figure, right? Because I know there's a single release Ewok, but I don't, I don't, I don't think it's out yet. But as of the recording of this video, this is our first Ewok in hand. So here we can take a look. I'm pretty sure it's using the same sculpt, so let's take a look at what this new sculpt has to offer for Ewok. And it it's got me excited because they're doing a great job painting it and overall sculpting this this character. And I can't wait for them to release the army build version of an Ewok so we can army build our little Ewoks. But as you can see, the sculpt on the face is super cute and looks really good just like it does in the movie. They pulled this off really well. We have this hood that's draped over his head. That is actually sculpted on there. I cannot remove this hood. If I remove or if I try to remove it the entire head pops off so that's not gonna happen this is actually molded on there here's a closer look at the backside and the fur of the figure and you can see they went and articulated it pretty well as much as you can for a figure this size and it looks good I like the nails that are painted we got a little knife there on the side which is molded on there that does not remove the detail of painting the feathers on the figure looks good too now I do want to get a closer look at that face sculpt. Looks good and the eyes are captured very well too. But they're not blinking. The ears are popping out from the top there. And that's about it. He comes with a staff or, or, or a stick or a spear. What do you call it? <laughs> what's, what's the exact specific name for this? I know the, the Star Wars gurus are out there so let me know what, what you call this weapon of his or but as you see Hasbro went ahead and painted the fuzziness the fur there painted the strap that's strapped around the top and the wooden stick itself looks pretty good overall so I like it and here we have him holding his stick or spear I'm gonna get drilled in the comments for that it looks super good I think this might be my favorite piece of the set to be honest with you looks so good Alright, so his articulation, the head is going to swivel, even though we got this drape thing there, it's a soft, pliable plastic, doesn't really hinder it too much, so he can still look left, and he can still look right, more than I thought he would, to be honest, I thought uh, he would not be able to move his head because of this, but he can still move it, he can still move it up very slightly, and he can still move it down very slightly. Uh, obviously this is definitely going to hinder that movement the arms would go up higher but again it is getting hindered that is not too bad though that is a lot more than i thought it would too now this side let's see you know it is what it is but it looks good the arms can spread apart about this far it's not a crazy amount there uh, we do not get bicep swivels, we get a single jointed elbow that has a pretty decent bend to it. That looks good. And then we have a swivel at that elbow, we have a swivel at the wrist, and the wrists are actually have hinges too, so that hinges forward and back, and they're both uh, with the regular hinge. There's no side hinge on these here. Uh, for the torso, we have a diaphragm joint that swivels left and right. It can go back and it can go forward, it can tilt side to side very slightly. The legs can kick forward about this far right here. And then we can go back as well, about that far. Uh, in and out, not a split, but still good enough for me. We can get a little bit of a thigh swivel right there as well. Single jointed knees will allow him to actually bend the knee pretty well. And there's a swivel at the knee, there's a hinge at the ankle too. I like the toes are painted, very nice detail. And then we have a rocker at that ankle as well. And our last action figure of the set is Luke Skywalker. Jedi Luke with the poncho, the Endor poncho on, and the helmet. So this is cool, it looks good, just like Leia, it can be removed. Before we do that, let's just take a look at the figure real quick. Take a closer look of the face. Got the printing tech 
there and it looks great. I think that looks like Mark Hamill or younger Mark Hamill. The helmet can be removed. So let's check it out without the helmet. And there you go. So there's our Luke without the helmet. That looks good too. The fact that we don't need to swap heads or anything is pretty cool. This way now, if you want him without the helmet, you can have him hold his helmet on his side or in his hand. And that, you know, gives you some more displaying options. And not much else to see here, but a all black Jedi Knight of Luke. But if we pull up his poncho, there's a little peg here. We can unstrap the belt and we can get the poncho off. And here is our Jedi Luke without the poncho. And if you missed out on the Walmart exclusive, maybe you can settle for this one. But not in my book. I actually am one of the ones that missed out on the Walmart exclusive one. And I still want it. So if anyone has it, by any chance, give me a shout out. Uh, and I will probably get it from you. But anyways, uh, this is a different head sculpt. I know that for sure from that release. And I think I like it the Walmart one a little better. Unfortunately, I can't compare it next to this one because I do not own it as I just stated. Uh, Luke comes with his lightsaber, of course. And we have the hilt and the blade. The blade or comes off. So the lightsaber has a little loop there to hook it onto something, but he doesn't have a hook to hook it onto. We have a little peg in the back there, which is where you unstrap the belt. I don't think that's what you want to use to... Maybe you can pull it off. But I don't think you would want his lightsaber behind him like that. That's not very accurate. But there is no other option. Uh, so if you want him to hold the hilt without the lightsaber ignited, then you're going to have to put it in his hand. There is no um, holster for it or anywhere to put the hilt there. But I like that they are doing this now where the peg looks like a real lightsaber. Unignited. So, and of course, as always, Hasbro does a great job painting the lightsaber hilts and making it as detailed as possible. So I always appreciate this. Of course, just look at him holding his accessory, his lightsaber. He can hold it just fine. And his articulation consists of the head moving up. This one actually is on a body jointed hinge, so that's a pretty funny thing there that all the other ones do not have the hinge, but this one does. So he can look up further, and he can look down further. But it makes sense though, his neck isn't a separate piece. So, you gotta have the hinge. If not, you won't be able to look up and down. The other ones do have the neck as a separate piece. It articulates up and down, so that allows the head to move up and down further, just like the hinge. So it balances out. The arms are gonna go forward and back. In and out about this far, those go up fairly well. Uh, there is no bicep swivel. We do have a swivel at that elbow and a single jointed elbow there at a 90 degree bend. The wrist has a side hinge with a swivel. This one has a regular hinge with a swivel too. We have that lower diaphragm joint almost to the waist. It's a ball joint so you can go back and forward, swivel, kind of tilt left and right as well. The legs are gonna kick forward about this far pretty well and back down, in and out, not too far. We have a thigh swivel, double jointed knees, and then the ankles are gonna go on that hinge forward and back and there is a rocker at the foot. It's crazy how I don't have Jedi Luke, I don't have the original release nor the new one. Do have to get on that pretty soon and grab one of those, but I do have the X-Wing Pilot Luke figure, which came out in series one and also came out part of the archive wave. I also do have Farm Boy Luke, which isn't the best Luke that we've gotten from, from Black Series. Here is a comparison next to a Gamorrean Guard, which made a large presence in Return of the Jedi. And then next up we have a just a regular Stormtrooper. We'll go ahead and throw in Darth Vader. And here we have the Mandalorian and the Child. Alright, so next up we have our speeder bike. This seems to be the same speeder bike that came with our original release Scout Trooper way back in the blue and black box era of Black Series. But this looks familiar. This looks like the Marvel Legends Rider Series effect piece. I believe Ghost Rider or, or Cosmic Ghost Rider had that effect piece. But the details are all still there. The scratch effects, the weathering, the battle damage, the buttons are painted, panels are painted, bolts, seat, bag on the back, pedals, Everything looks good. On the back we get the flaps that do go up and down just like the original one. 
So here we have the original speeder next to the new speeder. Overall, I'd say these are like 95% the same. The only thing that's really different is the dry brushing of the silver uh, scraping effect that they put on. I think it looks a lot more realistic on the newer one here. Uh, this one, you can just tell that they were kind of paint strokes or paint brushes on it. And I'll give you guys a closer look. You can also see the stand that this one came with compared to the new one. So we have the new one on the right and the old original one on the left side. A little bit more silver dry brushing on the new one as you see. The satchels on the back look pretty similar. I think there's actually more shading on the original one there. So here you can see the strokes and then here just a little bit more realistic just in my opinion. You can see on the end there's the new one, there's the old one old one new one nothing crazy nothing insane at all really doesn't make a difference to be honest it's not that serious the control panels looks pretty much identical the seats look identical the only difference i see here is that my old one has dust and the new one does not so i don't want to spend too long on this because it's nothing very drastic but here you have the thing i've been dying to do ever since i heard this set was going to be a thing was to put Leia and Luke in their indoor outfits of course with the helmet and all on the speeder bike to recreate that scene when they're on the speeder and I think it works pretty well I mean you got to play around a little bit with the legs and the feet and try to get it as good as possible onto the footrest there Gets a little awkward with Leia's legs sometimes and Luke's because Luke is a taller figure so his legs are longer. But for the most part I think it looks great. Fantastic. I'm very excited about that. I mean I think this is how I'm going to have this thing posed on my shelf. I don't think that Papalu is going to be on the speeder at all. I think it's going to be Luke and Leia because this is a lot more iconic and memorable to me for sure. So there you have it everyone, this is the Star Wars The Black Series Heroes of Endor box set for Star Wars The Black Series, the 2020 event exclusive. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this in-depth look. This. Let me know your thoughts down below on this set. Are you happy with it? Are you excited for it? Let me know what you guys think overall. Definitely think this is a must-have for any collector, mint on card or loose. Alright guys, that's it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Leave a like if you did. Leave a comment. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. And as always, have a great day. Bye. That's crispy.